there's this uh, battle going on over Syria. I, I, uh, Canada's uh, Prime Minister Stephen, Stephen Harper is uh, openly criticizing, to quote Victoria Jones of the Talk Radio News Service, openly criticizing uh, the Russian support for Syria. I think that, um, and of course the Iranians have, have announced, well not, and of course, uh, uh, apparently it's, it has come out that Iran was planning or is planning or maybe already is sending 5,000 of their people into Syria to help the Assad government. So it's looking like this could be really, really sketchy. This could be a very dangerous situation. This is not like, um, you know, going into Zimbabwe where pretty much everybody agrees that Robert Mugabe is nuts and saying, you know, we're going to take out the government and help replace it with, with a better government. And this, this gets back to my, my argument that, which I made last week and at, at some length and I will make again in more brief form and then we'll pick up your phone calls. And that is that revolutions that don't happen from within, from the bottom up, are revolutions that are doomed. That are just, you know, unnecessary shedding of blood. That, that, the, that when... And, and the reason why is because if there is enough popular support to pull off a successful revolution, then there's enough popular support to form a successful form of government. If there's not enough popular support to pull off a successful revolution, then after the revolution, you're going to be right back, you're not going to be right back where you started, you're going to be in a worse position, you're going to have an incredibly unstable situation, and it's going to be an absolute mess unless you're going to engage in nation building, unless you're going to do what we did in, in, in the Philippines and in Puerto Rico, um, you know, station military there and, and fight insurgents for five generations, as we're doing to this day in the Philippines. And we started that war in 1898, the Spanish-American War. So tread carefully. George Washington warned us about this. He said, basically, outside of commerce, don't get involved in the politics of other countries. And, you know, I'm with him on that. And, in fact, here's what uh, Mr. Putin had to say about Mr. Obama's decision to arm the Syrian rebels. He said, one does not really need to support the people who not only kill their enemies, but open up their bodies, eat their intestines in front of the public and cameras. Yeah, great, uh, as, as uh, Victoria notes, you know, great, great start. Great, great way to, uh, you know, start a conversation with, with Obama in which he's supporting these rebels who, well, there's, they're a mixed bag. I mean, there's no doubt many, many good people among the rebels and no doubt many, many bad people among the rebels. It's kind of the nature of some rebellions, but particularly of one like this. People, people like to, in their minds draw parallels to the American Revolution. But there's a couple of things to remember about the American Revolution that are, that are quite important. The first is that we were a fairly well-developed country, given the era. The second is that, and this is probably the most important, is that we had all the institutions for our own governance established and running. We basically had a shadow government here. Every state had a legislature. Every state had a governor. Counties had county officials. Cities had city officials. There were elections in some cases for these people. Although most of them were appointed by the crown, they were there. And so making the transition from having, you know, a legislature and a governor appointed by the crown to one elected by the people was not that dramatic a transition. We had small d democratic institutions or small r republican institutions in place number one number two we had popular support we didn't have to have you know canada come help us or mexico come help us or spain come help us or france come help us france did loan us money but hey they were just playing banker yeah you can say well you know they wanted to uh, put their thumb in the eye of the british sure 
but they were just putting money at risk. It's a very, very different thing. So I don't think that, you know, I think that when we think of these guys as if they were American revolutionaries, we make a terrible mistake. Just saying, tread very, very carefully.